Last month, I made a video on the state of the Ender 3 in 2022, where I covered some of my current favorite mods and conversions that are available. One of the conversions that I touched on was the Ender 3 Exoslide upgrade along with the recently released Exoslide Extruder and Hot End. Exoslide sent these out for me in testing back in August, so I've had a few months now to put them through some tests and sort of formulate my thoughts on this upgrade. In today's video, we are going to be diving into the Exoslide Linear Slides, Extruder and Hot End upgrade. We'll go over what the setup and installation was like, how it has performed, and I will give you my final thoughts based off of my testing so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's first dive into the Exoslide Linear Slides. The Linear Slides are modular and meant to be compatible with 20 millimeter to 60 millimeter aluminum extrusions. They consist of an injection molded body with brass inserts, four steel or plastic wheels depending on version, and a tensioning mechanism. Unlike traditional roller wheels, the exoslides have a much lower profile, and instead of the wheels riding in the grooves, they actually bite onto the smooth portion of the aluminum extrusions, which makes the whole system quite a bit more rigid. The slides can interlock with each other, and in this case, for the X carriage, it's four slides completely surrounding the 2020 extrusion, which also contributes to the added rigidity. Each slide has four M4 threads spaced exactly 20 millimeters apart from each other, which makes designing for them fairly simple. The slides can either be purchased separately or in quite a few different kit options, primarily covering the vast amount of Creality printers. In my case, this Ender 3 Pro was converted using the XZ belt kit, as well as the Y kit, which converts the bed to also the X slide system. The XC upgrade replaces the single lead screw for the Z-axis that's normally on the Ender 3 Pro and replaces it with a belted system which does a much better job of supporting the X carriage from both the left and the right side. We covered quite a bit about a belted Z in the Z hopping video but this will allow for faster Z travel, faster Z hopping and it should help to eliminate any of the artifacts that would be caused by either a bent or just improper lead screw. It also uses a worm drive gearbox for the Z-axis which automatically locks when powered off, which for a belted system is nice because it will prevent the entire tool head from crashing down into your bed. For the X and Y axis conversion, you still use the same motor pulleys, but the V wheels are swapped out for the slides. Installing the slides onto the extrusions is pretty straightforward. Every single exoslide piece has two preload bolts that you'll need to tension for the specific extrusion that they're going on. There's a short video that covers the process, but in summary, you want to make sure there's no gap between the two wheels on each side, but you also don't want it to require a ton of force to pop the slides on and off. It should just sort of kiss the sides of the aluminum extrusion, but you don't need them squeezing onto the extrusions. The kit install has you disassembling the majority of the printer down to its frame. Each of the upgrades comes with a PDF that has written instructions as well as CAD drawings kind of showing the upgrade as it's happening. I do think that they could use a few additional images and perhaps a little bit more detail. As I was doing the conversion, there was a couple of times where I really had to read what it was saying a few times to fully grasp what I was supposed to be doing next. Because I wasn't using the stock Ender 3 extruder and hot end, and I was using the, at the time, brand new Exoslide extruder and hot end, it did add a layer of some additional complications. The Exoslide extruder and hot end combo is quite a bit shorter than the stock Creality hot end, and because of that, when I installed the XZ upgrade, I actually couldn't get the nozzle close enough to the bed to print. The solution to this is either to slightly move the uh, gearbox from the side here so that way the exoslide isn't crashing into it. If you do the y-axis upgrade you don't have to worry about that because it actually raises up the bed of hair and so it removes that gap but that was something that I ran into that I had to sort of work through. The exoslide extruder is definitely a unique one and unlike any other extruder I've ever gotten in or tested out before. Weighing 208 grams with the motor, 3010 fan, and heat break, the extruder body uses a dual shaft worm gear setup to provide even force when feeding the filament. The extruder body is completely made out of aluminum with the drive gears being out of stainless steel and the heat break is a titanium heat break. As far as mounting the exoside extruder, there is a slot for an M4 bolt on both sides that mounts perfectly with the threads on the actual exo slides, which is how I have mine mounted. There's also two holes for M3 screws on both sides. So if you're not using the exo slide system, you have other options as far as how you can mount this to your X carriage. One thing I was not initially aware of with this extruder that I'm definitely a fan of is its modularity. You can run it as a direct drive, you can run it as a Bowden. It's compatible with standard V6 style blocks. It's compatible with 
the Exoslide heat block and hot end, and it's also compatible with Revo. They actually include a little adapter that I checked out that will allow you to bolt it to the bottom of the extruder, and then you can use the E3D Revo system. So if you're trying to standardize with the E3D you know, nozzle heat break combo, whatever we're calling the entire thing, this is a extruder that is compatible with that setup. For my setup, I've been running this with the Exoslide hot end, which is a fairly low profile block made from nickel plated copper, which is great for high temperature printing. It comes with a 24 volt, 40 watt heater cartridge and a 0.4 millimeter brass V6 style nozzle. It does come with quick disconnect cables for the extruder as well as the hot end, but for me, other than the extruder extension cable for the stepper motor, for everything else, I went ahead and just cut and soldered and then used heat shrink inside of this mesh because to me, not having the bulky plugs all over allowed me to get a little bit cleaner of cable management around the X carriage. For the fan mount, you'll need to print out the fan mounting bracket, which also includes the actual fan shroud. And there is an optional print that you can add to this side provided by Exoslide that will allow you to mount a BL touch. They have two options available right now. One of them is for the stock Creality 4010 style fan, if that's what you wanna use. I had a 5015 on hand and they also have a version for that. So I figured if I'm upgrading all this, we might as well upgrade the cooling. So I went with the 5015 version that I printed out of ABS. I've been wanting to do a bit of flow testing for some time now and figured this was as good of an excuse as any. For this, I used Stefan from CNC Kitchen's fairly automated flow test that he covered quite a few months back now. This project has since been ported over to a web app, which is really nice. It allows you to enter in a series of parameters like temp, bed size, how many different tests you want, it will then generate the G code, you'll send it off to your printer and it will perform a series of purges and extrusions at different flow rates. And so that way you can afterwards measure to see sort of what your hardware cap is. With this, I ran a series of flow tests at 210, 220 and 230 Celsius with Polymaker Polyterra PLA. I started at eight cubic millimeters per second and ran in increments of two up to 22 cubic millimeters per second. I chose this temp range because I feel like a lot of people probably print PLA around 210 Celsius. I, for quite a long time, have printed PLA a fair bit hotter at around 220 Celsius, 215 to 220, depending on the machine and the PLA. And then I also wanted to just see if I increase that even a bit more to 230 Celsius, what would the difference in flow rates be at that increased temp. At 210 Celsius, we had little to no loss of extrusion up till 12 cubic millimeters per second. At 14, we had about 5% less extrusion and it quickly tailed off after that. Increasing the temp to 220 Celsius let us print up to 14 cubic millimeters per second with little to no loss with a pretty heavy drop off of 9% once we tried to reach 16. Increasing the temp again to 230C let us get closer to that 16 cubic millimeters per second with only a 2% under extrusion. In a recent stream, an awesome community member, Delmar Franks, linked me to a print tuning guide that had a chart with some approximate flow values for common hot ends. Based on this, the Exoslide hot end is fairly aligned with other standard flow hot ends available on the market. I wanted to confirm this data and remembered a while back seeing a V0 flow test racetrack that was created by Matic Really that he used to test the flow rate of his Voron Zero. In his video on this, he actually modified the G-code to increase the flow rate at set increments so that he could see when the extrusion became inconsistent or the print quality degraded. It's a pretty interesting video and absolutely worth checking out. His content is really rad. I will have his channel uh, and the link to that video in the description down below if you want to take a peek at that. In my case, I knew the hot ends max theoretical flow rate based off the testing I had already done. So I sliced up the model making sure that the max flow rate or the flow rate for the entirety of it did not cross 14 cubic millimeters per second and I sent it off to be printed. I let the print go for about 30 millimeters in height then stopped it when I felt I had enough to examine. The two smaller inner curves have a bit of inconsistency consistency, which I'm attributing to the speed the tool head and bed were moving at, but the actual walls are gorgeous. I saw no signs of under extrusion and the exoslide system and the hot end combo did a fantastic job of printing this out. As far as the extruder goes, my experience with it has been quite positive. I've done a fair amount of printing with this setup, but the majority of it has been test prints, various calibrations, and just seeing how quick I could push the thing. When slowing it down to normal speeds, the prints have been really, really nice. At higher speeds of roughly 150 millimeters a second with the acceleration set to 4,000, I did get some inconsistencies along the Z axis that I feel are more attributed to the motion than the actual extruder. Even with these stiffer exo slide slides, this is still an I3 style printer and the limitations are going to be with the large amount of mass that's whipping back and forth. 
The extruder had no problems working with TPU. However, I noticed when I was trying to push it speed wise, if the print had overhangs, it was definitely struggling to cool the overhangs quickly. I did upgrade the fan, like I mentioned to a 5015, but it's still just a single fan. And I think if I somehow could incorporate a second fan to also help making sure the part is being cooled from all sides, it would definitely help if you're trying to print TPU at higher speeds. So what are my thoughts after running this setup for some time now? Well, I think let's first start with the linear slides. The linear slides have been great since I've installed them and I've had to do absolutely zero adjustments on them. They've been out for at least three to four ish years now. And I've talked with people over the years that have used these, have them on their printers and have printed thousands of hours with them and have had to do no adjustments at all, which I know would not be the case with standard roller wheels because I've printed even with less on them. And typically it's the bed, at least on an i3 style printer where the wheels will start to wear down quickly and you'll eventually have to replace them because even with tightening the eccentric nut, you'll still have a little bit of slop or a little bit of play in the bed. I also like the simplicity and modularity of the ExoSlide system along with the fact that it's quite easy to design for them because there's M4 threads on all of them exactly spaced apart. So when you're in CAD, you don't have to take a bunch of measurements. You know exactly where you need to have mounting holes, which is awesome for expanding on this. The biggest downside to this system really comes down to price. The XZ upgrade is $180 and the Y axis upgrade is another $80. So you're looking at $260 to upgrade the three axis, which ends up being more expensive than the printer. I actually bought this printer returned off of eBay for $100. So we're talking, you know, two and a half times the price of the printer itself when I got it. Because of that, it is definitely a premium upgrade and there's no denying that that price point will make it less accessible. With the price of low cost linear rails being a fraction of the system, and in my experience with the ones I've ordered off of AliExpress after a good cleaning and re-greasing being pretty solid, I can see the price being pretty hard to justify. The Exoslide extruder is really nice and I have enjoyed using it. If I had to nitpick, the tension arm is on the front of this and you sort of, from this corner here, pull it outwards towards you. And I don't know if it's just because I have bigger hands or what the deal is, but I noticed a couple times it was sort of difficult for me to get a grip on it um, without gripping onto the fan, which I don't really like doing. That might just be a me thing, but I at least feel like it's worth mentioning. The implementation of the mesh worm gear drive is awesome, and I absolutely love the modularity as far as the different hot end options that you can pair with this. Currently, the extruder is $130 and the hot end is $35, which puts it at about the same price as the E3D Revo Homera. I haven't used that setup, but it's definitely up there in price. I'm sure some of it comes down to the economies of scale and because ExoSlide isn't getting these as mass manufactured as some of the other hot end and extruder options out there, it costs a bit more for them to have these made. Regardless, if you do shell out for this, it's definitely a high quality extruder and I always love seeing additional options coming out on the market. As far as the ExoSlide hot end, it is performed really well. I don't feel like there's a whole lot to point out about it. It's a small heater block and the biggest perk I would say is that it's made out of nickel plated copper, which again, will work great if you're looking to do some high temp printing. But aside from that, it is a, a fairly small heater block using standard V6 nozzles. And if you are wanting something that is a high flow or high output, and that's your goal, you'll probably want to go with something a little bit beefier. And that has been the ExoSlide slides hot end and extruder combo. That was a lot to cover. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, I did my best to cover the things I felt were interesting when it came to the, a, a hot end and an extruder. If there are things you would like to see in future videos where I cover extruders and hot ends, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to get some feedback on that. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.